Hey guys, Kenny Phases here. Today we are going to be exploding this copper sphere in Blender. It's super simple and there's a lot of cool techniques that I'm going to show you guys. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so this is what your final result is going to look like right here. Let's go ahead and open up a new document. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete our default cube and our light, of course. I am going to make sure I am on cycles, GPU, and I'm just going to add an environment texture in here. You guys can use whatever you want. I'm going to use the one that I used for this tutorial, which was peppermint uh, power plant right here. So this is kind of what that HDR looks like. So I'm going to snap to my camera view and I'm going to add in a sphere to our scene here. I'm going to go ahead and give that a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to give it a value of two. I'm going to apply that right click shade smooth. So guys, in order to make this work, you're going to have to go into your preferences and make sure that you have the cell fracture add on enabled as I do right here. So object cell fracture. So you want to make sure you have that enabled and then we can go ahead to our next step here. Now, in order to explode our object and actually fracture it, you want to have the sphere selected. Go to Object, Quick Effects, Cell Fracture. And I'm actually just going to keep all these values just the way they are, which is what I did for my own background. I'm going to click OK and just give that a second. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to split up the sphere into multiple parts. So now what it did is that we have multiple parts here. They're basically shards of the sphere. And what you want to do before we do anything, guys, is go back to your original sphere in your hierarchy here. Hide that from the render and the viewport because we don't need that for the final render. So now, as you guys can see, we have all these shards to work with here. So we can literally move them however we want. So I'm going to snap back to my camera view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward this part, guys. But you guys can literally do whatever you want for this. Now that we have the sphere split up into parts, we can literally just move the shards however we want to create a very cool scene. So I can kind of move this shard out like that kind of make sure that it's still not touching the other pieces. And as you can see, we're getting this really nice effect where it looks like the sphere is actually exploding. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this part up and you guys feel free to do whatever you want. I'm gonna show you what I did after I'm all done. So guys, I'm all done moving my pieces around. I think this looks really good. Again, you can do whatever you want. This is just what I think looks good compositionally. So now another trick that I'm gonna show you real quick is you wanna highlight all the pieces, all right? So highlight everything except for the camera. Actually, you don't wanna have the camera selected. All right, just like that. And then what you wanna do is you wanna click on this little gizmo right here and you wanna click on individual origins and then you just wanna scale everything down just a little bit. And what that's gonna do is just create some space between our objects, which is perfect because we want it to look like it's fractured, but still kind of separated. We don't want it to look like it's too close to each other or we're gonna have some clipping with the geometry and it might just look a little bit weird. I think this looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to, I think it was on 3D cursor and we're just gonna stop that right there because I think that looks perfect. So you guys can go ahead and space these out however you want. I just personally think this looks great. So guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add in another sphere and I'm just going to go and zoom out here and just scale this up a bunch till it's covering the camera and everything else. I'm just going to shade that smooth and I'm actually going to add a glass shader to this. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in just a moment. I'm going to go to rendered view, press zero to go ahead and clip back onto our camera. And as you can see, we have this nice blurred background. If I go ahead and lower the roughness, it's a very crisp background, but if I just up the roughness of this glass, we have that nice blurred background effect, which I just love to do in all my scenes. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click on the camera, I'm gonna pop out this gizmo, and I'm gonna give this a X rotation of 90. I'm gonna bring it down so it's still facing our scene here, just like that. And then of course you guys can go ahead and add some coordinates to your environment to go ahead and rotate that however you want. I actually think this looks really good, so I'm gonna keep it right there. Go ahead and click on your little camera icon down here and enable depth of field. And then with our eyedropper, just select any object from our scene here. And I'm going to give it an f-stop of 1. That looks pretty good. You guys can even give it a lower value if you want. Sometimes the lower the value, it can start to look a little bit bad and nothing's focused. But I actually think this looks really good. I have an f-stop of f.2, so we're going to keep it right there. Now I'm just going to add a simple material to this. Again, you can make this whatever you want. The main part of this tutorial was the cell fracture. But right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a nice little copper shader. So I'm going to kind of give it that nice pink color. I am going to lower the roughness and raise the metallic all the way up just like that. I think that looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to this little gizmo and our restriction toggles. I'm going to click on this little arrow and I'm going to make sure we cannot select our camera or our original sphere. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to click and highlight everything and then shift click the one that we added the material to, Control L, Link Materials. And now everything has the same material, which looks really nice. So I like where we're at right now. We're gonna add a few more final touches to this before it's done. Typically when you add a light source, you will add a, an actual light source. You'll add a point light, a sun, a spotlight, or an area light. But the way that I like to do this sometimes is I actually like to add in a sphere and just add an emission shader there. So I'm actually just gonna move this sphere over here. I'm gonna add in a new shader. I'm gonna make that emission. And this is kind of where you get to be a little bit creative. So I'm just gonna actually make this kind of yellow. I'm gonna bring the strength up to five. And as you can see, we have some dynamic lighting already in our scene. Of course, we don't want this to be too far into our scene. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. I'm just gonna bring this down. Of course, you can scale it up. You can zoom out of your scene to see where the lighting's hitting. That looks pretty cool right there. You can scale it up even more. I think that looks really cool. And then I'll duplicate this and I'll just create a little bit of a cooler light up here. I'm gonna duplicate my material and just click on maybe a blue light. That looks pretty good. Scale it up even more and I'm gonna move it towards the top of the scene. I'm probably gonna move it back on the X axis. Scale it up even more. That looks pretty good. And you guys can play around with this until you get something you like. I think that looks really cool. You can literally adjust anything the way you like it. I just really wanted to show you how to do that cell fracture part because I just thought that was such a cool effect. And now you're pretty much ready to render. You guys can go ahead and apply any materials you want, any HDRI. Really, this is just totally up to you in terms of the creative aspects. I just do what I think looks cool and I try to teach you guys the techniques along the way. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be putting out more tutorials in the future just like this. If there's anything you wanna see, please drop it down in the comments below. I will also be including a free shader that I made for my actual background. As you can see, this one is a metallic shader. But if you go ahead and look at the background, I actually just made this really simple copper material that I thought looked awesome. So I am gonna include that in the description below and I'll go ahead and upload that to Gumroad so you guys can download that. Until next time, guys, have a nice day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.